Thank you, Alf. And hello, everyone, and welcome to the Toronto Artistic Food Expo. We're glad you could join us today. Well, in 2019, I had the good fortune of being one of the home cooks who participated in season six of MasterChef Canada. I tell you, it was a wonderful and truly unforgettable experience. But today, I have the pleasure and the honor of hosting a virtual conversation with two MasterChef Canada judges, Chef Michael Bonaccini and Chef Claudio Aprile. Chef Claudio, Chef Michael, welcome to the Toronto Artistic Food Expo. And thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of uh, very interesting topics to cover. So uh, let's get right to it. Um, it was just about over a year ago that restaurants and the entire food service industry was forced to shut down because of COVID. And I remember reading at the time that over 800,000 food service jobs had been lost. And as of today, many restaurants have closed uh, their doors permanently. You both experienced this firsthand. So what has your experience been like through all of these very difficult times? Thank you. Uh, you're absolutely right, Tony. Uh, last 12 months have been probably the strangest 12 months that we'll ever see in our lifetime. It was surreal. It was unpredictable. It seemed never ending. And, and even though I'll say the year has gone by fairly quickly, it has been painfully slow in the way it has sort of unraveled. And yes, it has affected our industry in a huge way, not just in Toronto, not just in Canada, but globally. It is an industry that has, has been knocked to its knees, unfortunately. And we have lost thousands and thousands of jobs within the industry, all kinds of jobs. And there's the trickle down effect of closing restaurants and losing jobs because that affects supply, that affects uh, repairmen, technicians, uh, the chemical providers for our dishwashing and sanitizing, the, uh, the toilet paper rolls that we use and wash hand paper. It, it, it's a huge effect. And uh, it's just been one that we've all had to navigate as best we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. Claudia, what yeah. about your experiences to all of this? Yeah, it's been um, definitely been a very difficult time for so many people. Um, you know, I mean, I got to be honest that I, I find that um, for myself, and I think Michael probably and Alvin can can agree, is that we've been very fortunate that we we've had, you know, uh, Master Chef to really have something that we can focus on that we're really proud of. And I'm not trying to plug the show, but just the the action of going somewhere and working together. With, uh, with a group of, of incredibly talented people, the home cooks. And again, I'm not trying to plug the show, but that's really been, uh, you know, it's interesting that used to be kind of the, the side gig um, for, for, for the three of us. Um, and in the last year, it's been the gig, the one thing that we've all really culminated around and focused on. And um, it's great to see it, you know, now it's finally, it's there, it's, it's real, it's airing. Uh, but that that once upon a time was, you know, it was kind of something it was almost like um, something to uh, almost like not a hobby, but not your full time gig. Uh, so that's been a, a, a for me anyway, it's it's been a great experience to be able to do something, focus on something, work hard. Um, you know, I've been cooking since I was 14 years old. So for me, Cooking is not just a job by any stretch for me. It's something that's a huge part of my life. And to have that taken away, um, it's a big part of me is kind of lost in a way. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's next. Uh, with, with COVID, it's been difficult because it's been a goalpost that just keeps moving. You don't know where, where it's going. You don't know if the rules are going to change. You don't know uh, if what the lasting effects of this are going to be. Uh, there's obviously a huge mental health uh, issue that, that is, I think the sleeping giant here for so many people that um, rely on the hospitality industry 
not just for monetary gain, but for a place where you belong. I mean, kitchens are, I think, and restaurants as a whole, um, if they're run properly, they become like a family. You go to work with your family. You go into service with your family. And uh, for that to be, you know, taken away with, with zero warning. I mean, it's, I think it's been really difficult for a lot of people, um, you know, and I think that we're going to, once we reopen, uh, I think that there's going to be, um, it's, it's going to, there's going to be a big responsibility on the operators to make sure that, that the staff, you know, are, are sound. They feel, they feel confident. We're going to have to slowly get back into it and in a way, um, reintroduce reintroduce everyone back to that family dynamic. So I, I think that's that's another part of it. Yes, yes, I agree, Chef Claudio. It is important to reestablish, you know, and to reconnect with the kitchen family, absolutely. Uh, the experts are also saying that uh, the restaurant, the hospitality sector is the key to economic recovery and can potentially bring back at least 1 million jobs. Um, my question is this, is with all the changes that are taking place and all the restrictions that are being applied, what is the restaurant sector going to look uh, post-COVID? Great question, Tony. It, some, some of this is, is sort of crystal ball gazing. Uh, I think we have a sense of where things are going to go. Uh, as you mentioned, the sad fact here is that Hundreds of thousands of jobs have been lost within our sector. Uh, they are important jobs. They, many of them are entry level jobs, which I believe are really, really important jobs because it allows youth. It allows, uh, immigrants who come to our beautiful country to get a foot on the bottom rung of, of becoming part of the workforce. And so many of those individuals that start off as a prep cook or a host or a bar back or a server assistant, end up being bitten by the hospitality bug, so to speak, and fall in love with the industry and, and become real rock stars within that industry. And that, I think, is, is so important. And what makes our industry special, unique, and different? You know, I've always said to my son, to my family and friends, that uh, you work in the hospitality industry, you'll never be out of work a day in your life. Well, how how wrong was I? Uh, and I, I hate to say that I'm living through this and experiencing it. So who, who could predict what was going to happen? No one could predict exactly right. But now we have an opportunity to come back and come back big. We will, it's inevitable, we will lose more restaurants, more concepts, more jobs, but slowly and surely we will get back to whatever that new normal is. And I think that in our industry, we have always been ones that drive change, have always been innovative and creative. It's an industry that you work very hard, long hours, sometimes on sociable hours, but it's the backbone of our industry that keeps us pushing forward. And we just want to see our guests come back and do what we love to do, take care of them, provide them a great environment to work in, a great environment to eat in, a safe environment, and get back to business. And some of the changes that we're going to see may be some of these things that we've discovered during COVID times, such as using QR codes to read menus and specials and, and wine lists. Uh, we may see greater distancing between seating in the initial months of uh, the restart of, of our economy. Um, we, I think, will see greater use of such things as uh, ghost kitchens for operators that want to try something out but don't have the capital wherewithal to really get into their own bricks and mortar uh, location. So I think ghost kitchens are definitely going to be a part of it. The continuation, certainly for Oliver and Bonaccini, of pushing the envelope with our grocery store, a partnership that we've recently forged with Sobeys, where we're providing 
uh, conceptual dishes, uh, recipes, intellectual uh, experience to that organization so that they can provide prepared meals through their voila home delivery service. And that's the other piece that we're going to see is, is home delivery, curbside pickup. I think it will be a new way that restaurants can add a revenue line to their business. And, and I think that's a good thing. Those are just a few of the changes that I see. Claudio, how about you? Yeah. Well, you covered a lot of ground. Um, I agree with pretty well everything Michael said. Uh, I do feel, though, that um, restaurants uh, are a very resilient um, industry. And I think that uh, humans in general have a very short attention span. And I think that we're all going to bounce back in a very, very intense way kind of like the roaring 20s, you know, there's been periods in in the world where we've had, uh, you know, great dark depressions, we've had uh, natural disasters, uh, war, you know, and people bounce back. That's what makes, you know, humans so incredibly uh, resilient is that we have this spirit of survival. I think my feeling is, you know, we're, we're in, uh, you know, March right now, I think by September, uh, and this is just a shot in the dark here, but I feel that uh, the National Film Festival, uh, Toronto Film Festival is going to be, I think, a turning point. We're going to see the city reopen. Uh, I do think that it's going to be a very symbolic moment um, where the city just reopens. Uh, I think we have to reopen. I think it's too costly to to continue uh, operating the way we're operating. Um I do also see a lot more uh, safety measures in the in all industries, really. How we how we uh, get from you know A to Z, how clean kitchens are, how clean the front of house is. And I think these are very good changes that are going to be introduced. Um, but again, humans survive. We get through things. That that is one of our greatest qualities is how we adapt. Um, you know. Oh, absolutely, Chef uh, Chef Claudio. I mean, the restaurants, they want to follow the rules. And, and as the restrictions have continued to evolve, all restaurants have continued to invest time and money into safety equipment and safety procedures uh, to provide a safe and enjoyable dining experience for all their guests. Um, but, you know, Chef Michael mentioned uh, ghost kitchens before. And these are restaurants or establishments that deal exclusively in uh, pickup and delivery. You know, 81% of the people surveyed enjoy shopping online for their food. Do you think this will be the trend in the future? Mm -hmm. Will restaurants combine, you know, the more traditional service with the ghost kitchen concept? I think, I think, um, I don't think that you can replace the incredible experience of going to a restaurant that has been uh, designed by a very creative design firm, a restaurant that has that has great service, uh, core values, uh, great lighting, great sound, great furniture, um, delicious food. I don't think that's ever going to go away or ever go out of fashion. I don't think ghost kitchens uh, are are going to go away. I think they are going to become popular, but I think that there is an insatiable appetite and always will be for a restaurant experience, a communal dining experience, even, even dining in a restaurant where, you know, you are, you know, it's a, it's a call it a hundred seat restaurant and you're sitting there and you see someone that you recognize walks in. There's that beautiful feeling you get up and you, you go and you say hello to them or the, you have a great experience with, uh, with your server who, who maybe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, is just has a, a certain kind of a personality that makes you feel really good about yourself. Um, it's almost like online dating, you know, like that, that's very popular. I get, you know, um, the swiping back and forth, but nothing competes with the human connection of actually, you know, meeting someone in a grocery store and having the courage to ask them out. That's a beautiful thing. And going to a restaurant, I think, is something that is, it's universal. Sitting around a campfire with other people and maybe someone pulls out a, a, an acoustic guitar 
those things are irreplaceable and they're, they're going to come back. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Oh, they will. They will for sure. Chef Michael, I was, you know, we're talking about Master Chef before. I saw that segment with, uh, with you and Oscar where they were asking questions about, you know, basil and oregano. And I'm glad you picked oregano or you picked basil and you picked Parmigiano. <laughs> but one, one, one of the questions they were asking was uh, 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 take out or dine in. And, and you said, you know, I, I like to cook at home. I enjoy cooking at home, but there's nothing like the experience of, of dining out. You know, will it be the same, Chef Michael? Will, you know, I mean, Chef Claudio uh, made some really good points, but will it be the same? Can yes. you take it back to that point again? Well, that's, that's a very interesting question. I've always said you can judge a city by the caliber of its restaurants. And the restaurant industry to any city is vital. It is important. It's a part of the fabric of our city, not just the city as a whole, but even every single neighborhood. And we have amazing restaurants here in the city of Toronto. And to lose one of them will be a loss, let alone to lose dozens and dozens as we have already. And yes, in time, they will be, repre will be replaced with new and exciting restaurants and operations that serve food and so on. So yes, the, the restaurant experience as we knew it prior to COVID is everything that Claudio mentioned, that incredible energy, that vibe, that excitement of going to a restaurant, your favorite little spot on the high street or around the corner, your wonderful little bistro, your your favorite place to grab a burger or to have an a, a, a amazing piece of grilled fish. It, it's not just the food, it's the people, it's the sound, it's the vibe, it's the feel, it's, it's the excitement of getting around a table, the, the, breaking bread, sharing stories. It is so important to our overall health, mental, physical, and, and us connecting with people. So that is going to change in the early days as we start to build back the momentum of getting restaurants open. It's not going to be as easy as flicking a switch and everything is back to normal. If it was, well, life, life would be a lot easier. But it is going to be a long, slow, and in some cases, a painful process to, to get back to that new, new normal. Now, I also am very optimistic that there is a huge pent up demand for getting back to dining from the consumers, from guests that I've spoken to. They are eager and anxious to get into spring, throw caution to the wind in, in all the right ways and get back at a dining room table where they can be taken care of by a service team, cooked for by the chefs in the kitchen and enjoy and revel in that entire experience. And that's, that's not a lot to ask for. We, we've done it before. We know what needs to get done. We will have learned so much from coming out of such a pandemic that we will be even more prepared as we start to reopen and play very, very safe to make sure that the experience is on point and done exceptionally well. And I can't wait for that time to happen. Yeah, you can replace that experience. Chef Claudio, when we had the um, that r small reunion at, at your restaurants with the Master Chef crew, you know, with Josh. Oh, that was beautiful. It was amazing. I mean, you, you, you cannot replace that experience. You cannot replace, you know, the, the, the feeling of being together and, and sharing memories and creating new ones while you're sitting there. You know, I'll never forget that. Uh, and you, Chef Claudia, going around and meeting all your guests. I mean, you, you cannot replace that experience. You can't. 92% of Canadians agree that restaurants are a very important part of our community and that they're doing a great, great job. And with that, we'll end part one of the conversation with Master Chef Canada judges, Chef Michael Bonaccini and Chef Claudio Aprile. Please join us again tomorrow for part two. Enjoy the rest of the event. Off, back to you.